Hi, good day. I'm Paul from Solus, and today I'm going to be speaking about our new S6 single phase hybrid pro inverter. On the left hand side, we've got a completely unset up one. I'm going to go through each of the ports on the inverter so we can see how they work and what they do. And then on the right hand side, we've got a completely set up inverter. Um, here on the, on the right hand side of the face of the inverter, we've got four indicators. One indicator um, showing a battery icon, showing you the state of charge of the batteries. Um, then below that we've got a status LED. When it's in good operation and it's, it's operating correctly, it should be blue like it is now. If it was in a fault status, it would go orange. And if it was in a synchronization state, it would be blinking. It's, it's mainly useful for those customers that just walking past the inverter, they can see the, the current status of their machine if everything is good. Then below that, we've got a Wi-Fi icon. So this inverter does connect to Solus Cloud and give us online monitoring from outside our house using this data logger. This data logger is in the box with the inverter, so that is fantastic. And then below that, we've got a Bluetooth icon. So as I said, there's no display on this inverter, so we don't set up this inverter using a display. We use this very elegant app um, Solus Cloud to, to set up this inverter, also be able to monitor this inverter locally. So the Bluetooth, you, you, can, you get real-time information. Every five seconds, the, the data refreshes. You can change the settings. You can look at graphs, all on the, um, on the Bluetooth app, which is really helpful for setting it up. Now we're going to continue on to the different ports and interfaces we've got on the inverter. Um, starting on the left hand side, like all our products, we've got a, um, a, a two pairs of MC4 connectors. This is for your solar inputs. Um, you connect your solar into here, up to 600 volts on the single phase inverter. We've got our, our DC isolator on the right hand side, just like a lot of our products, which in this installation, we've got a DC isolator, but having this DC isolator enables you to have installations without the requirements of having an external DC isolator. Then moving a little bit right, we've got our power connections for our battery. So we've got um, a red cable and a black cable, battery plus written on the PCB for the ba battery positive, battery negative written on the PCB for battery negative. This cable that we've got installed here is, is only a 25 millimeter square cable. Um, this is only good for 100 amps. This inverter can do 135 amps. We won't have any problems on this installation because we've only got a five kilowatt hour battery and the battery will always limit the inverter to only 100 amps. So this cable is adequate for the system. But if you wanted to install more batteries on an inverter like this, um, you could still keep this cable and just set in a setting on the inverter to limit the battery current to only 100 amps and still keep this cable nice and safe. Additionally, if you wanted to install it properly with a good amount of batteries, a nice big system like you should, um, you would need at least 35 square cable um, like these at the back here. Um, this is good for 135 amps and would be um, required for a, a, a normal system. We don't supply battery cables in the, in the box, so that's something you'll have to source yourself. Then moving on to the communication um, ports. So the other thing that works with batteries is it's not just power transfer. There needs to be communications between the inverter and the um, batteries, and that happens through CAN communications, and that is the first port on this inverter, the black RJ45 8-pin port um, over here. And that is a RJ45, so similar to the port that you would connect into your laptops for Ethernet communications. You can just go and insert it there. And the other end of this cable is, is plugged into your battery CAN port. Generally, so we are compatible with um, multiple different battery manufacturers. Most of them, um, it is a straight 8-pin to 8-pin cable for CAN communications. You can purchase this cable from many um, stores. You can also make it up yourself. Um, but if you are making it up yourself, the, the only pins that we're using, so you can still have the other, um, excuse the pun, uh, you, can, you can still have the other pins connected, 
but the only pins that we're actually using inside this plug is pin 2, pin 4 and pin 5. Pin 2 is ground, pin 4 is CAN H and pin 5 is CAN L. So once, once you've made up the cable and it's connected into the battery, you can connect it into the first port over here. Um, and then, actually, I'll leave that off just so I can talk about the rest of the ports and I'll plug that in all in later. So moving on one to the right, we've got a meter port. So the default operation that you should be using on this inverter to give it grid information is using the CT. So inside the box with the inverter, you do get a, a CT like this and that CT is extremely important for the inverter to know the, the grid power information. The inverter always needs to know what the grid power information is all the time for it to do its job. So it's very important. In the box with this um, hybrid, the, the S6 Pro Hybrid, you get a box that looks like this. And in the box you get a, a Wi-Fi slash GPRS stick. Um, which we are trying to encourage as much as possible that these inverters um, get online. You can look at it remotely, you can troubleshoot it remotely. Then you get that CT, which I've just spoken about, in the box with the single phase hybrid. It's a 100 amp on the primary, so it fits around a 100 amp um, primary cable. The, the mains cable is 100 amps, which is sufficient for most residential installations and the secondary is 50 milliamps so 2000 to 1 would be the CT ratio for that. Then you get a, um, a battery temperature sensor so on the one end is an RJ45 which fits, fits into one of those ports there and um, the other end is a, a lug which fits onto one of the lead acid batteries in your system. It's only used for lead acid batteries so um, yeah, not lithium, so you would leave that in the box for lithium systems. Then you've got a paralleling cable, so these inverters can be paralleled. You can use two of these inverters to, for example, make a 12 kilowatt system. This is a 6 kilowatt inverter. You could put two of them together to make a 12 kilowatt system. You could put six of them, up to six of them in parallel to make a, a 36 kilowatt system. Now, just talking about um, paralleling in short, because I'm going to do a separate video um, focused on paralleling and setting up paralleling. What's very important to note about paralleling is that there's broadly two different types of paralleling. The first one is self-use paralleling, which is grid-connected loads will be able to be supplied from the batteries um, using the paralleling function, so you'll be able to do self-use with a much bigger charging and discharging capacity and then backup paralleling, which means that you can host your off-grid systems. Because these inverters can create their own grids, you can create much larger off-grid systems like a 36 kilowatt single phase off-grid system using six of these inverters. So that's what that cable's for. Then you get um, MC4 plugs for your uh, string side um, cables, you get some screws and you get RJ45s and that's for um, making up your cables for these connections. And then what is also in the box which is extremely important is your mounting bracket. So the inverter sits on this bracket, the arrow points upwards when you put it onto the wall, so you would, you would mount it on the wall like that, um, four screws in, uh, spirit, well, spirit level first, then the screws in, and the inverter sits on these brackets over here. So that's extremely important. Carrying on with the ports, so we've got a, a meter port. So I've, I've spoken about the CT, so that's the default um, setup that you would be going through. Um, but the limitations with regards to CT is the maximum distance that this inverter can be from your grid connection is 10 meters. And a lot of installations might have it that it, it's 15, 20 meters, um, maybe even 50 meters. Um, so in those cases, you will need to order from Solus a, an additional meter, a Eastron single phase meter, for example. That is what it looks like uh, over here. You would get this from Solus. You would insert this up at your grid connection and the CTs sit in here and those CTs maximum distance is, is 10 meters 
but that's fine because this is installed right at the grid connection and then the, the long cable that you would have between the inverter and the meter can be up to 250 meters um, and that's what you would do for those installations where the grid connection is far away from the um, inverter. Okay, moving on to the next port. So we've got the, and, and that meter communication cable comes in to the, um, into that meter port over there. Then you've got your two paralleling ports. You've got PA and PB. That's for setting up paralleling. And as I said, I will have a, a, a special video just for um, installing parallel, these inverters in parallel. Moving on to the bottom row, we've got DRM, which is grid requirements for the UK, and some other markets. So that's, um, uh, uh, th that's what that port is for. And then lastly, we've got the RS-485, which is just RS-485 communications to the inverter for troubleshooting or whatever you desire there. Then moving on to the gray um, pin connectors, um, inserts, they're pushing push in, in um, terminal block that you can push the cable in and, and push to disconnect. Very nice and easy to use. Uh, the first two pins is HM, stands for hot mains, and that's where you plug the CT in. So for default installations, I said that CT that you're using, uh, the one that you got in the box, you put uh, white into pin one and black into pin two. Then you've got gen start and gen stop pins. If you wanted to use a fuel generator with this inverter for those winter months where you're not getting enough uh, solar energy, you would program the inverter to automatically start the generator when it's detecting a low state of charge, for example, and that's where you would connect those, those pins in. So it would electrically start that fuel generator for you. Um, then moving on to the AC power connectors, we've got the generator port, so that's where you would plug in that fuel generator um, into the generator port. We've got live, neutral, and PE, the earth connector. Then we've got uh, here the middle port here, nice and loose, um, the, the backup connector. We've got live, neutral, and PE for the backup, and that's for the backup connection. So that's for your critical load. So generally with these installations, if you're using backup, you would split your, um, your consumer board, uh, your distribution board into critical loads and non-critical loads. Essentially loads that you don't mind turning off when the grid goes down and loads that you want always on no matter what. Um, light bulbs, your lighting in your, house, in your house, your computers, your internet, your TVs, even some residential fridges would be perfectly okay on this, especially considering this is a six kilowatt inverter. I would find that the majority of your sockets in your house and fridges and everything would be on your house, maybe just excluding your heating. And then you would put distribution circuits on that cable there. Then just one to the right of that, you've got your, your grid terminal block. Again, live, neutral, and PE. And that's where the grid gets connected into. Um, it, you can have your non-critical loads on there. So your heating circuit, if you're heating water, for example, your water heater, you would put on that circuit there. And obviously the grid connection is also connecting in over here. So this inverter doesn't create a voltage at this point. It only takes a voltage at this point. It can send power out at that point. It just doesn't create a voltage at that point. It looks for a voltage at that point, and the inverter can create a voltage on the backup port. So when there is no grid, um, the inverter creates a voltage at this point, and it sends 230 volts, 220 volts. It's settable um, on these cables here, um, and then conversely, it wouldn't create it here. So when the grid is on, the inverter closes some switches and puts that voltage, the grid voltage, onto the backup port. And then when the grid is not there, it detects that the grid is not there. It opens up a switch and it leaves the backup switches closed and it starts generating a voltage on the backup, powering up those loads. And all of that happens extremely quickly, uh, 20, 20 milliseconds, so that's hugely fast.